Hello, welcome to my uh, Twitch stream. <laughs> I'm out of practice, not done this for a few weeks. Um, so I'm Nick O'Leary, project lead, lead developer of uh, No Dread. Um, here with my weekly stream of developing No Dread itself, um, doing some, uh, whether it's bug fixing, new feature development, sharing what we're up to generally, um, whatever it might be. Um, so if this is your first time watching, please do say hi. If you're watching the live stream, say hi in the chat. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, then do leave a comment and let us know you're there. Do like and subscribe as the cool kids say. Um, great to see you guys, Softy2K. Um, Risho, great to see you here as ever. And Mr. Waleki, happy new year to you too. Wonderful. So what's going on? Um, well, I've had a nice few weeks break for, for the Christmas holidays and New Year. I have... Um, uh, this is the funny thing with open source projects where for lots of people, they have a day job and they like to hack on open source in their spare time. When you have holiday periods like Christmas, um, for me, when No Dread is my day job, <laughs> I have to be uh, careful to make sure I have a holiday. Otherwise, you know, my... I would never have a nice break. Um, just being able to ignore my work email isn't enough of a holiday. So I've kind of purposefully not done much no dread work over the last three weeks or so. Um, just enough just to keep things ticking over, um, keeping my head in the uh, in the forum. But uh, no, now it's you know New Year, back at work, uh, even if not back in the office and. Yeah, looking forward to um, making a start. So John says, yeah, except for No Dread 1.2.7. To be fair, I did 1.2.7 on my first day back off vacation. <laughs> and um, that, uh, that in fact, um, you know, hit the ground running and all that. So um, that's good. Um, so yeah, want to hit the ground running, want to get going. Um the notional plan is to have no dread 1.3 um by end of this month early february uh, we'll see how we go um i think we have to be a little realistic given um suddenly here in the uk we're now in another lockdown even if they didn't quite call it a lockdown so i've got the kids at home with me every day so i'm homeschooling and well to be fair my wife is doing a lot of that work but um I do the maths lessons with the kids, so my um, yeah, juggling quite a lot. But that's this is kind of how things are for a while now. So one dot three, I'm hopeful will still be roughly on schedule end of January, early February. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, so what what are we doing tonight? Well, um, so there's there's lots of big items have merged in over the last week or so, stuff I've been working on, stuff I've talked about in previous streams. So subflow modules, being able to publish subflows as NPM modules and have them loaded in like normal nodes. So that's now merged into the dev branch, ready for 1.3. Um, more work to be done around that, around documentation, and um, still trying to decide whether we want to feature flag it, as in disable it as a feature that people opt into or not. Yeah, still need to think about that. There's the plugins work that I've spoken about on previous streams. So again, that's um, a lot of the the basic work for that is in, which is good. Um, but need to spend a bit more time working on some actual plugin implementations just to help flush out have we got all the right pieces in place. Um, but that's good again for one point three. Um, and then we have what else have we got? Um, oh, I'm, lots of other little bits. But what we're going to do tonight is um, a bit of a, very much one of those, unlike these big ideas that we've been in the plan a long time, sometimes you just get a bit of inspiration for an improvement to the UI. So we're going to see where we get to on that tonight. Um, now, um, let's see. So here we are. Here is no dread. Um, ignore the flows. It's my usual messy workspace of 
random flows of helping people on the forum or just debugging different features. What um, what I would what I want to play around with and see where we get to is is this. When I select some nodes, say this top flow, and I hit Control E to bring up the export dialog, you get this view. And in this view, you just get this blob of JSON. And you can choose what gets exported, selected nodes, current flow, all flows. What, um, and it, you know, in each instance, it gives you the JSON for that. If you say selected nodes, you don't have much feedback to say, have I actually selected what I me meant to select? So often in the forum, when we ask people to share their flows, they will just select one node and they'll export just a single node, often just like an inject node or a debug node, not the actual nodes in the flow. And just thinking through that sort of from a usability point of view, there is no feedback in this dialogue as to what have you actually selected? What are you about to export? So what um, I wanted to play around with was changing this view, so on, on the clipboard view, rather than just having this text box with the JSON, and we would still absolutely want to expose the JSON, um, that to have this as a tabbed view, um, you know, like, like you get in um, GitHub, where you have you know, the right tab and then the preview tab that shows you the preview of what you've written, have a very much a similar approach of have a preview tab, or whatever it gets labeled as, which gives you a list of what you're exporting in a way the user is going to um, get more value from. So when we talk about lists of nodes, you know, very much like we have in the outliner, having a structured list, um, so it shows config nodes. And, and this is the other important point, somewhere in this little lot. Um, I mean, so the, the example I had, these three nodes, debug function, sorry, inject function debug, um, that's exactly what you get in the export. If I select this subflow and hit export, I I get a lot more because I get and you can't see it. I mean, if I hit formatted, you, you'll see it. I mean, there is the one node I'd selected, but because it's a subflow, it's pulled in the whole subflow definition as well. Um, and again, as a user, just hitting export and just, you know, this JSON is not human readable. Uh, so the, the other case in point was, um, uh, say, an M MQTT node, in fact, I've I thought I had a config node. I do have a config node. Oh, I must be scoped somewhere. Anyway, um, hush now. Yeah, so MQT node, and when I export that, again, if we look at what actually gets exported, you get the, um, the MQT node, but you also get the config node goes with it. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that's the idea. Enough, I think. Um, uh, so, John, can you show a thumbnail of the selected nodes? Step one is we'll just present a, li a, 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 a structured list of the nodes. Um, there is a separate idea for the import nodes dialog of when you paste in the JSON here to be able to get a preview that actually shows the flow. The problem is at the moment we don't have a reusable widget that can draw a flow. Um, where, yeah, so that would be quite a lot of work. But what I'm hoping is if we can, I want to create a reusable widget that gives a, you know, you give it some JSON and it will give you a properly rendered list of those nodes. And my hope is implemented correctly. Once we do it for, say, the export nodes dialog, it will be trivial then just to drop that into the import nodes. So when you paste in the JSON, it can then show you that list um, up front. But um, yeah, being able to generate a picture of what the flow looks like, 
that's at the moment that would require a lot of duplicate code and um yeah not going to go for go for that right now okay so where do we start so what we're going to do is um oh writing code where do we start with that Now, as ever the case, this is one I had done a little preparation in thinking, but not no preparation in writing code. So um, I don't expect to finish this item tonight, but I'm going to jump in a bit and see where we get to. I suspect there's going to be some amount of just faffing around with CSS just to get the basic structure of this new tabbed interface right. But yeah. Um, uh we'll see how we get on now um what are we actually looking for um we're going to do it for the export nodes dialog and that is in um clipboard.js i believe set up dialogues let's uh make this big i've lost my obs view so yeah hopefully you can make this out um, and we want it in the export let's just collapse all the code down so show export nodes pretty sure this is where I want to be so um, from a structure of a dialogue structure of the dialogue what have we got we have um, one set of tabbed panes coming down this side with clipboard being one of them so and it's it's just within the clipboard pane that we're gonna do this this new thing so right let's go find um the clipboard pane um da -da -da. So it's this sort of thing, if I have time to prepare, I just re-familiarize myself with the code. So I spend less time just scrolling through code and more time talking to you. Um, yeah, preview function at flows.node.org. Again, I'd, it'd be really cool to be able to, given flow JSON, to, to generate a static image of that flow. Um, that's... Yeah, again, one of those um, ideas of, well, what, what's, what's it going to take to refactor the drawing code to make it that level of reusable? Um, like add tab. Right, here we go. Add the tab for the export tab clipboard. Um, where do we actually construct that? Here we go. So these dialogues exist. The HTML for these dialogues exist as strings in the editor it's, um, oops. and what we want to do export to SVG uh, yeah um, so I think I've spoken before in a previous stream I've I did do a whole bunch of work to look at trying to export even from the node red editor to be able to export um, uh, to be able to export a image of the flows and I managed to get a lot of the way there but for I think it was the icons were completely broken because of we couldn't inline the icons um, so again something I'd like to be able to come back to in the future um, so just for the moment I'm just gonna right so we're in this is the HTML for the for the this view here you can see this text area is this text box and what we're going to do is um, and in fact and these are the let me just check yeah and the compact and formatted buttons they're part of this view 
So um, instead of adding something there, we're going to add something at this level. Now, there's part of me I would love. This is one area where I would like to say we're going to just drop Internet Explorer 11 and be able to do um, multi-line strings like you can in modern browsers. But until we, yeah, until we do that, we're sort of stuck with this kind of hacky, lots of concatenated strings, um, which is prone to error, but um, that's for another day. Uh, so we are going to copy and paste this extremely long ID, and this is going to be the JSON view. And then we're going to add another one. And this is going to be the preview. Um, and then we're going to give them both a class of, um, yeah, these, these class names are ridiculous. They're, they'll do for the moment. We'll improve them in a, well, improve them another time. Like I said, I suspect there's going to be quite a fair amount of just wrangling of HTML and CSS to just get the basic structure in place. Um, so I've added, just trying to remember how this works. Um, clipboard, uh, right. I'm going to call this da, 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 tabs. In fact, I can steal from that one. You stick an ordered list, an unordered list inside this one, and this is going to be the um, yeah. I might do that as a class. No, that's the tabs. I'll call this the tab bar and then these are the tabs right so that's a whole bunch of HTML let's go find where we're going to set this stuff up we're going to plonk it down right around here I think so no dread has a standard utility library for creating tabbed interfaces, um, which we're just going to make use of. And this is the, uh, the clipboard tabs. And we want to create it. So that's the ID of the list we want to create it in. It's not vertical. And we'll on change function is just, do it. just going to copy and paste some code. So whenever the tab changes, we want um, let's just go back up to my template. I gave each of the tab contents a, a consistent class. So what we do is whenever the tab changes, we hide everything with that class. And then whichever tab has been activated, we then show. OK, and then we need to add some tabs. So clipboard tabs. Um, and again, just go back up, get the ID of the two tabs we're adding. So we've got red UI, clipboard, dialog export, tab. No, uh, it's here. So it's this is the ID of the preview tab, and then the other one is that but JSON. So let's do the preview tab first. And this needs to be NLS, but and I, I'm not going to, I'm using preview because I'm sort of influenced by the GitHub example of where you write and get the preview. 
I'm not sure that's what we will call it, but I'm just just doing this for now just to almost prove to ourselves that this is working. So we've added the HTML for the tab bar and the individual panes, and then this is the code to turn that tab bar into node red tabs and add those two tabs. And yeah, okay, let's see what's what. So in the background, that's all been rebuilding. Let's reload. Okay, so I select some nodes, I export. Okay, so we now have a tabbed pane in here, the preview tab and the JSON tab, which is good. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, it needs some more finessing. Um, uh, but I think the principle is there. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm, I'm not from a look, from a, yeah, from from a, an appearance point of view, not too sure about this appearance of having the two layers of tabs, you know, the vertical tabs mixing with the horizontal tabs like this. But um, you know, sometimes it will become more apparent as we carry on. Um, what so what we're going to do now is some. See, now comes the, the CSS wrangling. And my, um, so a counter of the amount of selected nodes on the title or on top of the tab might be a good indicator initially. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, um, and I think this is part of it. Uh, this is exploring for ways of giving different feedback. And, um, I, I have found when you're exporting, if it's both nodes and config nodes and maybe some subflows, the user might get initially confused if it's just a raw count, that they've only selected one node in the workspace. So why am I exporting a dozen nodes? Um, so a raw count um, may or may not... Yeah, I, it, it's useful feedback, but, but um, I think we do need to find a way to provide a little bit extra to that. Um, so one thing I'm noticing just from a UI point of view is, uh, say, if you compare it with the library tab, you can see how the contents of this tab goes right to the border. The clipboard one doesn't, um, which is due to this padding. So we can expand it out. Now we'll want to add some padding back in down here, but, um, you know, that gets rid of a bit of wasted space and it's it's a bit more pleasing how the line joins up over on this right hand edge um so okay I and mean, this is where you know, i do lots of hacking and then i completely forget all the changes i've made so we're gonna um try and keep changes in sync with the source code um let's go find Okay, so what we're doing is we're turning off padding 10 inside that area. And what are the, let's remind ourselves, we've got the, um, clipboard, oh, I collapsed it by mistake, there we are. So all of the panes inside have that ID, so let's, so instead of having padding on the outer container, we're going to put the padding on the tab containers. If that, does that make sense? Um, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so, okay, well, that's looking better. So the tab bars are now nicely lined up. But the, this content, it's, it's the text box has now got its breathing space. And once we start putting content in this preview, it will have breathing space as well, um, which it may or, not, may or may not need, but we'll see. But let's just focus on getting this one working again. Um, so at the moment, it's all squashed up. 
and let's have a look why. And it's all squashed up because we've got a height miscalculation here. 100% um, minus 30. So, um, oh, that's right, because it's now in a new container. So what happens if we set this one's height to 100%? That obviously shoots off the bottom because it's also taking into account the height of the tabs. Now we could use Flexbox, we could use Grid, we could use all sorts of things, but um, uh, sometimes it's just easier to know that the tab bars are 40 pixels high. So we want, what do we want? So we want the, the um, we want the contents of our tabs to have a height of uh, be a hundred percent less the height of the tab bar. Okay. And then we want the row that this um, text box is in needs, is it still doing a hundred percent? If we bump that up to 70, yeah. This is a little rough and ready, what I'm doing right now. Um, some might say I am just bodging it in to make it work. It's not the most elegant way of doing it, but with a goal of demonstrating or making some progress, I'm not going for elegance. That's what iterations are for. Um, oh, that hasn't worked at all. Why didn't that work? So I've set that to height. Okay, what did I miss? What did I miss? So we've got, that's, height is correct. Got the tab bar. I've got, ah, there we are. It was the typo I made. Uh, I saved it with the typo and in the background it was rebuilding the style sheets and <laughs> me fixing the typo didn't get spotted. So I've just resaved that file. It should have got rebuilt in the background. And cool. Okay, so that's been good. Although, I yeah, this is the problem with this approach. You can now see this <laughs> dialogue's gained a scroll bar. Something in here is pushing the height. Make Yeah, something's pushed the height down. What has done that? Um, so this is why something like Flexbox or Grid would be quicker, but it would then mean fixing everything else. Um, this one has a height of four. Ah, hold on. That's a height of 400, which is okay. Something in here overflowing. Oh, that's rhetorical. Yeah, there we go. That's overflowing. So what's that? Okay, so that's, that's my minus 40, not enough. Right, what we're going to do is set um, outline 1 px solid red. Um, and okay, I thought it was going to be 40, but that's, there we go. So we want that to be, ah, so that one wants to be 70, like that one. Okay, why is one working but not the other? Oh no, because I've just fixed them both. Okay, so we're getting there. Uh, this one, there's now too much space there. I suspect this wants to be back to 40. Yeah, I think that's okay. Um, let's just, I think, um, 
where is it? I think we can actually afford to change this padding to be, we don't need that extra padding at the top. So we can actually afford to make that 0 by 10. I think that works. And we can afford to make, um, this guy, but that can be, can that afford to be 30? Yeah, this can afford to come down to 20, I think. Okay, oops. Right, so what have we done? We have, this wrong, I make little tweaks there and I've got to then go and make the tweaks over here as well. Uh, we wanted that to be 0 and 10. So that's no padding at the top, just 10 pixels on the side. Make the most of all the space. Cool, cool. All right, well that's looking okay. So we've still got the JSON view. Um, that's all working. So now let's let's make the actual interesting part, the preview, work. So um, to do that, we are going to use another standard Node-RED widget called the tree list. It's the widget we use in the outliner here. Uh, it's the widget we use, um, if I export that and import, and select view nodes. This, in fact, is exactly what, um, so, th so this is the dialogue you get when you're about to import something with duplicate IDs. Um, now this, this view deals with all the edge cases of config nodes, subflows, and the lot. So um, all the code we need for generating this view already exists. The case is, can we uh, initially just copy and paste it? But hopefully the goal will be, I want to create a reusable node list widget. Um, okay, so let's go, um, let's go remind ourselves as I've not looked at this for a little while. Is the tree list stuff in here? Yes. Okay, so this is this is the function that shows that import conflicts dialog. Um, uh, and I've just scrolled too much because I've now lost it. list here it is so what we're going to do um, so there is an interesting question of how much can we just copy and paste this code or do we have to end up duplicating a lot for the moment I'm just going to copy and paste and and duplicate it um, there'll be some work most of the rendering code is is utility, so that's fine. It's building up the list of what needs displaying is actually what's going to be. Um, it, there's going to be some duplicated work, but you can see there's already a bunch of utility functions in here for doing this work. So let's see how we get on. Um, right. So this node list. This is how we add the initial node list. And let me just check what. <clears throat> right, so it, it just needs to be a div. It's not an ordered list or anything like that. So for now, I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to call it the preview list. Um, and we're going to stick it um, uh, 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 right. I should learn not to stream whilst I've got Twitter in a window over there and I keep seeing crazy shit going on in the world. Pardon the French. Um, 
Right. I'm stirring it, I'm staring at it, I'm stir here it is. Here we go. So this is our preview tab. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick in here. A div. So this is what's gonna contain our list. If I paste, yeah, oh no, don't paste now. Um, Da, da, da. I'm going to call it the preview list. I mean, these IDs are getting ridiculously long. At some point, I'll come back through and make them a little saner, shall we say. Um, okay, now, for now, we're going to create tree data. So this is what we actually want to display. Um, I can never remember. I'm just going to create some placeholder data just to show, yeah, I'm not um, not too worried about label and children, right? Um, one. So this will be a proper structured list at some point. And that's gonna be the next task. Once we get visually the list in the right location, we'll do some work to actually generate this list of real things. So just some pl some placeholder data. And that's gonna insert it and 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 yeah. Cause we always have to deal with the user can change the selection of what they're exporting, so we'll have to make it some slightly dynamic. Right. Okay, well, you can see <laughs> something there, but it has, um, it's looking a little funky. It's looking a little funky because we set the absolute position to not, 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 which is basically fill, fill the container you're in. But that only works if the container you're in, um, uh, yeah, only works if the container, it needs to know what, what's, what's the bounds of the container. So what we want is, um, so this is the ID of the container. And we go back over to the CSS and we want this container's position to be relative, which is to say um, all of its children's position should be relative to it. So. Uh, long and short of it, by setting its child position to be absolute, it's absolute in terms of the parent. So here you can now see we have that list starting to appear. Um, we can see uh, um, uh, the data, but you can also see there is a a cosmetic border. Um, I'll say in the chat, yeah, what's the secret project tab? I was wondering if anyone would spot that. Um, it's just some tabs that I, I've only just discovered the fact you can group tabs. Um, that, uh, yeah, so that actually expands out to a sea of about 20 tabs on something completely unrelated. And I thought, normally, I just move things out to another window. But um, I thought I'd try grouping it and then I had to name the group and I thought, hey, if I'm going to be streaming my screen to the internet, let's put a bit of mystery and intrigue. And I appreciate you for spotting it and asking. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so what do we want to do here? We want to um, possibly tweak the border of this list. Um, I just need to remind myself we want, I think it's this chap. I think it's this one. We want border, border none. Nope. Nope. 
just trying to nail down which of these guys is it the treeless container yes treeless container um border none okay and in fact ah, it's the pad it's the okay okay what are we doing we want i'm just going to rearrange this a bit because there's a lot of duplicate um i wanted 10 pixels padding at the top and bottom of this guy. I don't want it on the other guy. At the moment, I've got that CSS on the CS on the class that applies to both of them. In fact, I only want that padding to apply to the um, other one. Uh, so I think I called that Jason. Give him the padding. That's all goodness, and then we want tree, the tree list container that is inside the preview tab. I don't want to have a border. And save that. Let's see how this looks. We export some stuff. Okay, so this is looking okay. There's a still, oh, we're still getting that. We're still getting some padding, which um, I need to figure out. Why is that still getting? Um, we want it clipboard. Is this dude. Yeah, why is this one? Position relative height. I'm trying to work out. You can see there's a there is a jump of space between. So that's the tab bar. I've got highlighted blue. If I go down and highlight the next element, can you see that there is just that? A sliver of white between those two blue boxes they're not butting against each other and it's not due to padding it's not due to margin um it's this sort of rubbish that you know ui layout can just be so fiddly and you know so much time gets lost uh trying to finesse this stuff right um but in terms of value to my dear viewers, what should we do? We are going to, um, let me, is it, yeah, turn off. Order radius. Has that done it? No, there's still a bit of a border radius. What we're going to do is um, is this going to be a horrendously bad idea? Again, I could spend two hours just trying to nudge pixels around, which isn't going to be interesting to you guys. So, um, yeah, that hasn't quite done it. So I'm I'm going to live with some of a, um, yeah, going to live with the fact that it's not quite laid out perfectly and there's a bit of a border down here. I'm going to take that as homework to f tidy up what's probably far more interesting and what you guys would probably, in the last sort of 20 minutes or so, it'd be far more interesting to, rather than having this placeholder data to have uh, real data, real information in this list. So, how do we do that? Well, uh, you saw when I, cr so, I mean, this is one of the, th this is what I always find satisfying with Node-RED and doing the UI development. Uh, it is just identifying um, what are the reusable components. So, I mean, it's not, 
if you've done lots with other UI toolkits, it's like, well, of course, there's um, a toolkit to give you a tabbed interface. And of course, there's a toolkit to give you a nice tree view of data. But uh, yeah, I've always used Node-RED as the sort of the, the vehicle that I I play with. It's my sandbox for playing around with these ideas and developing the UI. And people say, well, you know, why don't you use Toolkit X or Toolkit Y? And part of it is like, well, there's just a huge nerd satisfaction in um, uh, building these toolkits for yourself. <laughs> Whether it's less efficient or not, I don't know. But um, Sharon, yeah, will the checkboxes be added as in the import? I mean, that that's a valid question. So... Um, just to show what Sharon's referring to, when you are importing duplicates, uh, well, I went through that too quickly. Uh, you import, you paste in the JSON, um, <laughs> and I will note, notice how this text box no longer has the padding it should, and that's because we've we've changed the CSS of the export dialog and it's shared with this one, so we'll need to tidy that up. But um, um, but yes, when I import this JSON, because it's got duplicates, we get this dialogue where you get to pick and deselect things to import. Now, there is a, clearly there is an, a workflow optimization, which is just by pasting in the JSON, it could do the analysis there and then. And in that preview, um, it could, rather than wait till you hit import to show this notification, it could do something all inside the dialogue. And oops. And yeah, that that will be a, a workflow to look at for sure. Um, but right now, that, and to be honest with you, that's why I'm doing export first. <laughs> and that was on purpose because, um, yeah, I didn't want to to lose time tonight on talking through the pros and cons of it changing the import. Uh, Security Live, did Phantom influence your development tool? No, I have not really played with... I mean, I've done... Assuming you mean Phantom JS, um, I, I've I've used Phantom JS a little bit for uh, um, non-Node-RED stuff, for automating some web stuff, but no, I can't say uh, I've done much with it. Oh, Nathaniel, good to see you again. So... Here we are. Um, right, so for those, this is the first time you're joining, I normally try and spend roughly an hour, ends up being a little over an hour. So we've been going for about 50 minutes. Um, I'll keep going a little while to see how we get on. Um, it feels like we're making nice progress. So I, I don't want to artificially stop mid-flow. Um, but yeah, so the point I was going to say in terms of going from the dialogue we had to a dialogue now which has got these extra tabs um, it's got a tree view albeit with placeholder data um, you know it was it was a few lines of some extra HTML elements to host those components and then just a few lines of JavaScript to set up the tabs and set up the list and yeah creating that list that's all the code there is to it from a, you know, all the hard work has done by past me creating that widget. The hard work for us to do now is to create the right structure for tree data. So um, I'm just going to go down and so I've scrolled down to this is where we build the import conflicts list with which we're shamelessly borrowing code from um, then um, just to look at how does it import tree data now um, I realize let me just scan through it da, 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 okay So you want to go quiet whilst I just scan through it. Yep, 
Yeah, we're going to be able to reuse a degree of this. Um, I don't. It's going to require a bit more logic than we have right this second. Um, oh, well, that's an interesting point. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to just copy the name, the ID of our tree list, and we're going to create a new function somewhere. Call it refresh uh, export preview. Now, um, da, da, da. just going to set this up so that the work done to actually generate the data is in a different function. The reason I want to do that is um, because we need to dynamically change what's in that list. So I'm just going to, so I've just moved that down to a function. We are going to initialize it with an empty list and then we're going to call it. So I'm just going to check that that's all working. I don't think there's any issue with us initializing the data in a different, in a, another function. And I think I've got the logic right. Yep. So look, we've got the data in the list. That's good. Um, because he says as he scans through desperately, here we go. Um, Let me look through, dun, dun, dun. right. So we can get the current JSON by getting the value of the text box. Um, and then we'll call that the flow data. And then the flow is the parse of that. And then what we'll do is, um, yeah, this is going to be rough and ready. This isn't going to be the proper way of doing it. Is we're going to, for the moment, just dump into tree data uh, the list of stuff we're about to export. Oops, too much, too much. So we we get the flow data. We parse it, um, and in fact, we should, just in case, it's a bit hacky. Uh, so that gives us an array of nodes. We then map each of those nodes to the data structure that the tree list is going to use. Like I said, this this is just a quick hack. We, we need it to be more structured. We need it to be more hierarchical. So there, there's going to be work to do to build a more hierarchical data structure. Um, and God knows I've written that code many times under various guises, but let's just go with this for now. Um, let's go find where, oh dear, okay, sorry. Just trying to find, okay, so this is the, where formats the group. No, we don't want to do that. We want, I'm just trying to look where, where do we set up the event handlers for when you pick current selection? Yeah, it's this, this is the guy. We want the click handler on this. Do I want the click handler on that? No, I want the click handler on. Excuse me. Um, I bet I set a click handler up on. No. Um, do I set a click handler up on this? Yes. So here's the click handler on the buttons. Yabba dabba. 
somewhere in here it does all the work to generate what's about to be exported and once that's all done we can then refresh the export and so let's see what this looks like so we select that first flow we hit export and there you can see okay it's just the node ids but those are the nodes we're going to export and if i hit current flow it refreshes and that's a list of all the node ids we're about to export and i hit all flows and there's a very long list now there's definitely going to be a performance consideration for the users who have ridiculous numbers of flows ridiculous numbers of nodes um clicking all flows you know we don't use some users have thousands of nodes quite literally um so we've got to be mindful just like we are in the outliner of making sure this is um done efficiently but at the moment we're just getting that list of node ids we can do better than that um, we can do better than that because we can do um, we can so we've got this utility function that's used by the import conflicts dialog but it also sets up all the UI elements um, so we are going to let me just think through how right i'm going to just run with rather than just set the label of each element oh, of each item in the list we're going to set its element to element um we'll get f oh darn it so they're calling these guys and these guys no, i think we're okay get flow label let's go through okay oh um yeah, no, I think we're good. We think we are good. So, just pass in false, false, and false for those. This is where I think we might come unstuck. We'll see. So, if it's a tab, get a flow label, otherwise get no label, and then return that element. Okay. I hope this is interesting. Um, I'm painfully aware when I get too engrossed I start speaking in half sentences to myself so I hope this is following okay that's blown up n is not defined where did I not there we go I didn't change those two references let's see where we get to export okay the layout's a little funky but um, we now have a list of the nodes and the proper icons. If I do current flow, yeah. And if I do all flows, yeah. So you can see there's no hierarchy here yet, but um, we can soon do something about that. Let's. Right, let's add a bit of hierarchy. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a thing of flows. We're going to have a thing of subflows. Um, and no, we're not. Um, oh, that's just like I said. I've written this code a few times in various guises. Um, we're going to do, we're not going to do a flow.map, we're going to do a flow. Oh, maybe that. So flow for each, I 
expect we're going to do this in a couple of passes. So first go round, what we want to do is pull out all the flows and subflows. Ah, no, we're not. We're going to do uh, a nodes by Z. Uh, so if this node dot type is a tab, then we add it to our flows by ID. Um, yep. Uh, if we say, oh, sorry, I'm just my mind is rush, rushing ahead to edge cases that that ordinarily I'd now distract myself with, but I'm not going to distract myself with. I'm going to just plow on, and do nodes by Z. No, we don't need a node by Z for that. Uh, else, if node dot type is a subflow. So this is a subflow definition, not a instance. Okay. Else, um, we are going to say uh, node. We might not need this nodes array, this nodes object, but it doesn't hurt just to have it for the moment. If node dot z exists, then we want nodes by z node.z else if it doesn't have a z property then it's global so we just use a hard coded constant for its z dum 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 okay then what we're going to do um fact what we're going to do because we don't need to be able to look them up by ID is flows and subflows we're going to make arrays not objects so we can just because we want to keep them ordered so we're going to build up a list of the flows and we're going to build up a list of the subflows and like I said lots of edge cases to worry about but we'll worry about them in a minute um, and then we're going to create our tree data object and it's going to have um, oh, edge cases, edge cases abound. <laughs> okay. Um, interesting. So the problem we're about to hit Um, so I'm writing this code which assumes it's a complete flow configuration that assumes every node that its parent subflow or flow will be in the data structure. So by doing this sort of parsing, we will find all the flows, all the subflows, and then put them in the list. The problem is, if I've just selected a few nodes and I'm exporting those, the parent container doesn't exist, um, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so again, we're going to, what we're going to do is, uh, <laughs> so let's see, um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any goodies to offer on the live stream. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not set up for giveaways, but uh, I do appreciate you spending your time with us. That's very good to see. Um, I'm just trying to think through how this is going to work. Too many edge cases. My mind is reeling. Um, How do we do this? How do we do this? Right. I think we now need to iterate through the nodes. And what are the various possibilities? So this node, it's a real node or it's a config node. And that's another thing we'll have to deal with in a minute. Um, 
if the node has a Z property and it's uh, so <laughs> huh? oh this is how do we just keep things everything how do we keep everything ordered um, I'm going back to these being objects because we now need to be able to do efficient lookup of them rather than just iterate over them So what, we, what, what I'm writing now is basically, okay, we've got a node. It has a Z property, which means it lives on a flow or in a subflow. But if we don't have a node or a subflow to, um, I'm going to create a list of parentless nodes. Yeah. Um, do we need to do it this way? Am I making more work for myself this way? Possibly. Um, else, if no dot z. No. Oh, <laughs> see this. This is where I fall down trying to do the live stream whilst talking it through because for the simple task of just parsing this JSON and trying to get it into the right hierarchical structure, there's just lots of edge cases because we might not always have all the right things, um, and I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to find a quick path through that will handle simple cases. Um, to show you guys this working and l let me worry about the edge, harder edge cases another day. Um, how best to do it? Or do I just forget all that and let's get let's get the um, the appearance looking better? Yeah, let's. I'm going to delete all this because I'm not happy with it. It will make more sense another day. So we're going to go back to just creating a flat list of things with no hierarchy. Um, do I really want to do that? Sorry, it. No, we're doing it. We're, we're doing it. We are... Uh, do I want to... Let's bring all this back, right. Um, okay, I'm getting my concentrating face on now. Um, yes. No, yes, yes, okay. We don't want to save a reference to that. What we want this to be we're actually just going to build up. We're actually just going to build this up as these are the elements to display um, straight off. Now I've no idea what we do for subflows for this, but but we're going to go with it and children because flow flows have children it will be an empty array this will be an empty array okay and then if it's a regular node we're just going to push it on our list of nodes yeah good 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 and what we're going to do is tree Flows. We're going to build up a list of things to actually display. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'd, I'm 
if this, I'm not sure this is my masterpiece, but you know, the, the funny thing is, oh, here we go. I'm going to try and talk about ideas whilst I'm writing code. So just watch me get everything wrong whilst I distract myself. But um, I, I can't tell you, you know, how satisfying it is just to spend time writing code. Um, there is something just, I know it, it's one of my faults is just losing yourself in writing code when there are arguably higher, uh, higher priority s other things going on. Um, other things, you know, things people have asked me to do that I ought to be doing, but you know, just losing yourself in code can be quite cathartic sometimes. Um, uh, so, um, that, 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 parentless nodes, yep, yeah, we'll live with that. So then we iterate over our nodes and we say for each node, if node.z, um, we better have some global nodes as well, which are in fact the same thing as parentless, but subtly different. Okay, so if it's got a Z property and there's no, it's got a Z property. And if there is no recognized flow and no recognized subflow, then we have a parentless node. And we will get its node label. Oh, good, right. Else, if there's a flow, if we do know about a flow, then what we're going to do is what we better do is um, create the tree node just once so I don't have to copy lots of code. Yes, yeah, so we create the element. This is the this is the object that's going to go in the list. Now we have to decide where to put it in the list. Um, and if it's in a flow, then we'll push it into its children array. If it's in a subflow, um, then we'll push into the there subflow. Else, if it doesn't have a Z property, then it gets pushed into global nodes. Okay. Does that handle? Okay, it doesn't handle. No, it, it, that, that handles all the edge cases. He sort of says, maybe. What we're now going to do is, um, we're going to say if global nodes, okay, we're going to create tree data as an empty. So this is what we're actually going to put in the tree now, the sort of top level data structure. And if we say global nodes length is greater than zero, we're going to add in um, yeah, these labels are wrong, but we'll fix it in post. Um, yeah, we'll add if, yeah, if uh, parentless nodes dot length is greater than zero, then what we'll do is actually we want to It's not going to be a subsection of the tree. This it's just going to dump them in as is, and I think that's right. Then if what did I call them? Tree subs, tree flows and tree subflow. Get my pluralization consistent. Oh. Uh, so if tree flows dot length. Written zero. 
then we'll add a section of flows and we just copy and paste all that because we do the same for tree subflows and there's all the internationalization yada yada to do okay right let's have bets in the chat is this gonna work first time and by first time I mean you know how many times I've played with this right no nope. tree subflows is not defined that's because I spelt tree sub blows which is a mistake sub flows let's see how we get on cool 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 so okay I need to fix up some of the CSS positioning and padding they're off at the moment but there we just have the three if I go to the current flow ooh, it blows up cannot get property index of undefined in get flow label interesting okay and that's because 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 n why is that then okay what we're going to do is uh where are we get flow label where do we call get flow label oh it's the subflow case i bet that's blown up on a subflow Yes, that's blown up on the subflow. I can feel it. So how do I handle subflows in the import case? Um, um, import config subflows. Da, da, da. Do I really? Elements. Yes, I do. I use get node element. Right. The fact he uses get flow. Uh, losing the will to speak. Um, I should have used get node label. Don't worry. There's not going to be a test. I'm hoping this is just. Vaguely interesting to some of you. Right, let's just have that open. Okay, so we have our three nodes. Go to current flow, we get nothing. Awesome. Go to all flows, we get an error. Okay. Why does current flow not work either? Let's. What you can just stick in a console.log of tree data. Let's see what, what's the actual structure we're trying to. Um, trying to deal with just looking at yeah this looks okay well I don't know if you can see uh, it's getting an empty empty array when I click on current flow, yeah, selected nodes, it has the three, which is good. Current flow, it's empty. All flows, it blows up earlier. So I'm not going to worry about all flows and why that's blowing up for the moment. I'm going to stick in some more console.logs here of, let's see what global nodes is. You know what? I never do this. I'm going to stick in a debugger statement. I never normally work this way. What perfect way to do this on a very rare occasion. <laughs> yeah. I'm just so much more naturally doing console.log than sticking the debugger. But what is interesting is, if I'm interpreting this right, um, ev everything's empty. I don't have any flow data. Which is interesting. Why don't we have any flow data? Having switched to current tab. 
Is it a timing problem? Am I getting the value for this? I get the value for it here. So this is the click handler on the buttons. So I've clicked, um, I've clicked flow. Uh, it does all this work, creates the exportable set, stringifies it, and sticks it in. Now, I hate to, I can't help notice this set timeout. I'm going to be saddened if this makes the difference, but because we've already set the value, so we shouldn't have to delay getting it back. But if the, again, if this works, it works. I'm not going to lose sleep. Um, oh, I'm an idiot. I, <laughs> I paused it too soon. Right, current flow. We've hit the debugger. Right, all right, the last two minutes, complete red herring. It paused and it, everything was empty. Well, of course it was empty because it hadn't got to the point where it got the flow data. So I don't know if you can see now, we've got the flow data. Um, it's not got any, it's got a flow, it's got global nodes. It's, I mean, that's all looking good. So if we step through this, we don't have any global nodes. We don't have any parentless nodes. We do have tree flows. So what's tree data look like now? Tree data is still an empty array. What have I done wrong? Tree flows. Oh no, tree flows equals one. Why does tree flows equal one? Where have I mucked up? Oh, yes, that's how I've mucked up. Because I shouldn't be reassigning it like that. I just need to do the push. And let's take out that debugger statement because we don't need it anymore. But I'm going to do that in the future. That's far better than console.log. Well, there we are. All you seasoned developers out there scoffing at me for just of just remembering to bother with using the debugger keyword. Okay, so export, we get the three. If we do current flow, <gasps> flows, subflows, and we can expand. And okay, the layout is still a bit screwy because I need to fix up the CSS. Oh, but that's empty. Subflow, and that's empty. Okay, that hasn't quite worked. Okay, he says begrudgingly. Oh no, I, I do print out tree data, so let's have a look. Tree data. We have flows and subflows. We have flows has one child with an element, but it doesn't have any children of its own. Is that right? Flows, yeah, that's not right. Um, flows and subflows, I'm giving them a child, a, child, a children array. Then we come down here, we loop through everything. That should push. Ah, I'm updating. One moment whilst I No, what's going on? Who's Okay, I'm 
staring intently at the data, trying to make sure, well, trying to see why have I not quite got the structure I'm expecting. If I go to current flow, right, let's make this. Oop. Okay, so you can see in the table I've got at the top level two elements. I've got flows and subflows. And sure enough, you can see here an array with two elements, flows and subflows. Each of those you can see has got a child of one element. So if I expand each of these, you can see, okay, yep, flow one and subflow three. So because I'm exporting from flow one, that's expected. But flow one doesn't have any children and subflow three doesn't have any children. If I look at the data structure, so I expand out flows and go into children. Children, it's got one element which is flows and it's got an empty child array. So why, why are the children going missing? Where are the children? Um, um, essentially why, 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 why? Okay, back to the debugger. Let's just step through and see. I'll shrink that back down to give myself some space. Sorry if it makes it harder for you to read. Go to current. F right, why is that not kicked in the debugger? Right, pause and debugger. But we don't care about this instance of it. We don't care about this instance of it. It's this instance. So it's recalculating for having changed to the current flow tab. Um, we step over and we're gonna iterate over 35 nodes. Oh. And I click step over rather than step into. So let's go around that cycle again. Step over and step in. So we have a debug node. Okay. We, um, it does have a note, a Z property. Yes, it does. Um, okay, so it's skipped. That's interesting. Okay. So we're looking at a debug node with a Z property of F8A7. And it, skip, it seemed to me to skip right over the flows and subflows. And that's interesting because flows, you can see here is an object which contains one flow with D607. But that's not the flow we're exporting. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Interesting. I I don't know if anyone's following me still. I I wonder if you're out there. I'm I know I'm running much longer than I normally do, but I'm kind of in a groove. So I'm gonna plug away a little longer. Um you know, do not feel compelled to keep watching me struggle through this. But um, but, okay, um, I'm, I just know this is going to be something silly, as in, it's going to be, I've just put a Z where it should be an ID, or it should be a ID where I've put a Z, and we will laugh about it when I realize what silliness I've done. You're right that the tension is palpable. Um, oh, we don't didn't want the debugger. 
go away debugger but um, so if I go to current flow let's go back look at the console so yeah uh, no oh oh no what Ah, oh, something's gone wrong with subflows is that right Turn off that debugger. Um, oh yes, there it is. Yep. I'm gonna get rid of all these console.logs, that's how confident I am. Uh, I have nodes, which this the variable is called node, not nodes. That wouldn't work if I was trying to compare the wrong thing with the wrong thing. So if I go to current flow, expand flow, flow one, and there are all the nodes that are in flow one. Subflows, here are all the nodes that are in subflow. Cool, so that's now working. If I go to all flows, you can see the global config node and then the flows and subflows. And in fact, you can just see in the background here, the outliner does flows, subflows, global configuration nodes. So um, uh, one of the tasks will be to update, make sure all these, these bits of text use the same message catalog for translations as the outliner. Um, but one change I can make straight away is move the global config nodes down to the end so the order is consistent with the outliner. Um, and in fact, Whilst I'm here, uh, no, we want the tab outliner. So we use this. We use the red dot underscore is the function to go get something in the message catalog. Menu label flows gives us the word flow in whichever language we need. Menu label subflows. And sidebar info global config. So, yeah, rather than hard coding that text, we'll now get that from the message catalog. So you can see how it says flows, subflows, and global nodes at the top, which was my lazy text. Now we're going to pick it up from the message catalog. So if I go to current flow, flows and subflows, if I go to all flows, flows, subflows, and global configuration nodes. So that's good. If we ever change the language over here, it will be consistent, it will update in this dialogue as well without having to make any code changes. Um, so that's good. Now the mystery is what the heck's going on with the padding um, of these elements. Um, and I know I've been here before. It's slightly depressing to know that I've been here before. Um, um, I blame Nathaniel distracting me with comments on GitHub issues in the other window. What was I doing? Um, padding. Padding, that's what we're about to fix. Let me think for a moment, thinking, thinking, thinking. I bet we will find in here the conflict box. Um, no, 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 no. I'm just looking for where we set some up, set up some of the CSS for the import conflict dialog box because it's got a nice, it gets the formatting right. And there must be something going awry. So let's, let's just 
pull up, so copy that to JSON, copy that to the clipboard, import it, view the nodes. So what's going on here? Why are these got why have these got better white space formatting? There we go, that's right, 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 right. Um Okay, I think I can see what I need to do, but yeah, bear with me. Um, there is some shared CSS that is, I remember when I modified this last time that I thought that's going to have to move, but in here somewhere. Yeah. If I add our new clip will preview to that list of CSS. Select those nodes and export it. <gasps> Look. Look at the padding, doesn't it look nice? Now that looks much nicer, doesn't it? Isn't that pretty, everyone? Hurrah, okay. Current flow. Ah, see, if you select current flow, it's kind of pointless having uh, a flows, yeah. Okay, we, we can work on making that a bit better. But, um, cool, I'm happy. There's a few bits of CSS still to tidy up. Um, need to pull out these labels into NLS, the National Language Support. Um, basically, internationalization for those bits of text. Although, hmm, I wonder, I wonder, is JSON one of those things that in Japanese is JSON? <laughs> ah, that'll be an interesting question for our friends who provide our Japanese translations. Anyway, so... Yeah, a few more bits and pieces to tidy up. Need to make um, need to make this list just use the space a bit better. There's a you can see it doesn't. You can just sort of make out down here if I, if I zoom. Yeah, look, you can see it doesn't quite make it all the way to the bottom. There's some rogue padding going on somewhere, um, and you can see in this top left corner, you can just see the corner is rounded because that's the default style for our lists but we don't use rounded corners when they're cropped in to the ui like this so need to go find the right css to tidy that up um and i think current flow need, could do a better it doesn't need to have the flows section i don't think it can list all of these you know, like, like we do here, we don't need the flows hierarchy as well, except, except there is a significant one. Um, when you're exporting the current flow, you do also include the flow definition, the flow node as well. So yeah, that's something to need to think a bit about. Um, and then all flows at the moment it's um at the moment it's a bit inefficient in that it is building all of the html content as soon as it populates this table um which is going to be really bad performance for people with big flows 
So what we're going to do is um, go and remind myself, is it? That's right. So there's a property you can set on any of these elements called defer build, which basically means don't do anything. Don't add any elements to the DOM, as in don't construct any visual components until the user actually explicitly tries to expand um, tries to expand it and view them. So for the user that has a hundred tabs across the top, um, you know they're not going to want to browse and view everything. Um, so let's save time by not building it until the user actually clicks. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so sh the question, shouldn't the JSON tab come before the preview one? That's an interesting question. Now, for the export case, so, so the two different cases, one is the import case, which we've not gone, where obviously the first thing the user needs to do is paste in the JSON. Um, and um, so clearly, yeah, we haven't gone near this dialogue, but when I do come to it, it is going to have to be doing something with the user interacts with the JSON tab first. For the export, it's, um, yeah, do we show the JSON or do we show the uh, the summary? And I don't know which way, I mean, I, you can see I have, I have gone with showing the preview over the JSON um, because in some ways this is the more useful display of what the user is going to be exporting. Um, that the user doesn't actually need to look at this JSON unless they want to go and muck around with the format options. But I'm inclined I mean, it's going to be easy enough to switch them. It's just swap two lines of code as to what order do we add the tabs. But I'm inclined to put the preview up first because I think that's going to be more useful for users. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, and also, I mean, in the very early days of Node-RED, we had to show this because you had to actually select all this text and then hit control C. Um, that's why we display it like that. But you know, the fact that now in pretty much all browsers, you can click copy to clipboard and it works means there isn't the same need to put the JSON in front of the user um, so uh, abruptly. Um, and it's also true because of the library option. The clipboard view is the one which will give you the preview of what you're going to be exporting. And if you want to export it somewhere else, like a library, you no longer have the the preview of what you're exporting. This is now more concerned about where you're exporting it to. But that's I think that's OK. Um, yeah. Right. I've been going for... A, an hour and three quarters, which is a record for, for my streams. I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to pretty much wrap up there. Um, as I say, there's a few, there's, a, there's probably another hour's worth of just tinkering with, um, improving a bit of the logic on these different cases. Um, and just fixing some of these slight position glitches, which I'm sure won't be too thrilling for you to watch me nudge pixels around but yeah i'm pleased with this um you know for well bear in mind i'm narrating as i go probably an hour's work if i wasn't distracting myself by talking to you guys um that's you know quite pleasing effect um and suddenly shows some intent for what we do with with the import dialogue um and yeah, and for the export. 
another task will be to um, look more closely at can we pull out some of this code. You know, I've copied and pasted a bunch of stuff here. Um, I'm reusing some of the stuff from the import conflict dialogue. I suspect there's more to be done, but uh, yeah, there are certainly other places where we want to display lists of nodes. So whether whether there's more to be done to make that a reusable component, I don't know. I'm not going to rush into that, but you know, it's always pleasing to find these common bits of UI that can then be made more common. But you know, uh, pleased with again the, the sort of the internal UI toolkit we've created in Node Red for adding tabs, for doing creating tree lists, and you know, a lot of a lot of time spent in the past is makes it so much easier to add in these features. And also if we improve the UI interaction with, with one of these widgets, it improves them all. Um, you know, the fact I'm now, you know, I'm not using my keyboard, I'm sorry, I'm not using my mouse. The fact I can keyboard navigate this tree list. You know, I don't have to re 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 implement that again. That all just works. Um, I have no doubt there's, yeah. Anyway, there we go. I'm going to put a pin in it there. Um, but, you know, you fully expect this feature to be in 1.3. Um, so, as ever, thank you all for joining, watching the stream. If you're watching on YouTube, please do drop in a comment. Let us know you're there. If there's particular things you want to, would like to see me cover in the coming weeks, you know, I've, I'm, this is, I've jokingly called this season two of my Twitch streaming. Um, yeah, uh, no, no plans to go anywhere other than spend spend an hour, an hour and a half with you guys on my Monday evenings. And yeah, stay safe, stay well. Um, come say hi on Twitter in Slack. Um, always love to chat with you guys. Let us know what else you'd like to see me cover. Um, otherwise, have a great week, and I'll see you next time. And this is where I have to fumble because I've forgotten I was meant to, whilst I say all that stuff, I'm meant to be very slickly going to find all the buttons so I can very slickly.